Look at that, Jason. We've got a shipping container cabin. That's what we have here. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. This week we head to Bob Cajun in Cottage Country, Ontario to check out a very cool solar powered off grid sea container cabin. My name is Jason Rio and welcome to my sea container cabin. What we have here is, uh, is, uh, is a cottage built out of seven shipping containers and it's a hub and spoke design so all the containers radiate out from a large center living room and so we'll give you a little walk around and start show to show you the place. Located near Bob Cajun, Ontario, this cabin combines some innovative energy efficiency and renewable energy components with nods to the rustic cottage life and does it all with just over one kilowatt of solar PV. They're able to use such a small system for one big reason. And uh, most importantly, we use a lot of DC power here. So almost nothing in the project requires AC electricity and uh, we'll explain the benefits of that when we get inside. So you had to be pretty innovative because, you know, I know an average home might, might need like seven or eight kilowatts to net zero over the, over the year. This is a lot less. Than that. This is a lot less. So the idea, um, as you, you know, it's very much true that to be efficient in, uh, in your energy use is the key. So you want to reduce your demand as much as possible. You need to be looking at conservation in the most extreme ways. And so what that means is you don't have some of the amenities in life like an electric toaster. You do not have a microwave. The biggest energy appliance is their fridge. They purchased a super energy efficient DC model from Europe. For lighting, you would expect LEDs. Jason used very affordable strips of LED lights in some rather creative ways. So what we have is uh, LED strip lighting that's uh, available. You can buy it by the roll. Um, it costs uh, just over a dollar a foot. And, uh, and when it's running, uh, a foot long strip of LED lighting consumes about a one watt of electricity. And so this, this has several feet coiled up inside of this uh, light fixture here as our main light fixture in the living room. And so it consumes uh, probably about uh, 10 or 15 watts of electricity. Um, in other locations of the cottage, you use smaller, smaller uh, strips of lighting um, just to meet uh, your, your lighting requirements. Jason Rio calls his design an octopod. He even sells the plans from his website. The project cost about $130,000 to build this 1,450 square foot sea container cabin. Okay, so now we're in the living room of the shipping container cabin and it's an octagon living room and there are seven shipping containers that are purpose, you know, that have different features in each room. And so this is a rec room, for example, television, refrigerators in here, that sort of thing. This is the workshop unfinished container where we were in describing the electricity system and it's like a giant mud room in unloading your gear when you arrive. This is a bedroom, master bedroom. The second bedroom, the children's bedroom's in here. And then we have the washroom, which is a sink, toilet, change room for the sauna. And over here we have the kitchen with some lunch being prepared. <laughs> and finally, the dining room. One of the biggest things you have to worry about in a cottage is getting water. And Rio has an innovative solar powered water system. These two solar modules power a little DC trickle pump that fills a water tower with water from their well. It's only uh, these two little solar panels feeding that pump and it's, it's autonomous from the rest of the project. So it's, it's a system that functions on its own. And so the beauty about this is that pumping the water through a water tower gives you energy storage in the form of elevated water and so that when you want the water for your fixtures or flushing the toilet there's no electric pump that kicks in to pump the water again it's gravity fed to those fixtures. One of the biggest features of Jason's sea container cabin is its simplicity and low cost. No foundation needs to be dug and it's just post and beam construction for the central room. Yeah that's great so so the whole project is built with uh, post and beam traditional post and beam structure uh, as, a, as a skeleton and there's an enormous roof system over top of the project. And so 
uh, to keep the containers out of the sun, to keep uh, the containers out of the weather so that they'll last forever instead of having to repaint uh, rusty containers after, after a number of years. We built a, a roof system that is entirely white. When it comes to heating, it's a mix of the old school and the new school. Okay, so in the shipping container cabin here, we have a, we have a very rustic wood stove that yeah. heats this main, this main space. And, uh, but at the end of the day, you need to be able to move some heat to the outward end of the containers to have some airflow through the whole building. So what we have are very high efficiency, uh, DC powered, uh, basically computer cooling fans that circulate the warm air from this living room space and push it through the ductwork and push it all the way through the ceiling here, all the way to the back end of each of the containers and out comes warm air at the, uh, at, at the outlet, circulating warm air into the, each container end. Rio is also using a heat recovery system that will feed heat from his wood stove's pipe into the thermally massive concrete floor using a retrofitted gas tank from a VW dune buggy. It's a combination of reusing containers, off-grid solar innovation, and energy efficiency that makes this sea container cabin one of the coolest places we've visited. To learn more about the sea container cabin, head to greenenergyfutures.ca. We've got a photo gallery, podcast, and a blog. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook or Twitter, and if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. Want to learn where the real sweet spot is for geothermal heating and cooling? Watch our Geothermal 201 episode by clicking on the video. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got a new video every two weeks.